What's up everybody, Nemo here. Are phones or a tool? And I would always find myself wasting so much time on this guy. So I wanted to figure out a way to take my time back. And this kind of led me to making my phone very minimalistic in nature and being very intentional with how I use my device. So I figured why not share with you guys? Maybe you guys can learn something as well. Maybe you can adopt some of my principles or it might just be interesting to see how somebody else uses apps and their layout on their phone. So shout out to Chris for this amazing wallpaper of myself and my girlfriend, but we're gonna swipe right in and just get right into it. So I have a black background because one, it saves battery life, but two, I use eye empty to create blank icons, which is why I have all my main icons down here at the bottom. The main reason is because I want them all to be within thumb's reach, and I don't want to have to use two hands to, you know, locate something. And to use eye empty, um, it's very simple. I'm going to have it linked down below, and everything I talk about in this video is going to be linked down below. But basically, you're creating blank icons that you can move and manipulate. So if I wanted to move mail up to here, it'll look as if the mail app is just floating in midair. But of course I don't like that, so I'm gonna have it come back down to where it was before. But it's very easy and simple to do, and on the website they give you all the steps to do so. On my home page, I have, of course, my main dock at the bottom, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven apps that I use plus, you know, the main dock on a daily basis. So they're easily accessible. And there is a reason behind why I have these specific apps on my homepage. And then I have all my other apps in a folder, which is also very easily accessible. And within the folder, it is organized with um, a system I have in place that helps promote creativity and productivity in myself, but everything is organized in this one folder. One benefit to having just all my apps on this one page is I don't have any additional pages. So when I swipe right, you can see I have batteries. Um, so I can see my watch, my phone. I can see the weather, reminders if I had anything map destination, uh, shortcuts, and then a quick search on maps. You can customize this however you want to, but this is how I have mine set up. It's quite simple. So when I'm on my home page, this is a brain dump. This allows me to put out my ideas. It allows me to get things done in a timely fashion, see what I need to do, and you know, it's just a very productive home page. So of course we have phone, messaging, calendar, and then I have the Nike Run Club app because seeing that app internally makes me be like, hey, I need to go run. I need to go, you know, feel good. I need to go work out. So that is a great placement for that app. And now we can get up into the other apps. Mind you, this isn't very minimalistic, but 11,482 mail. Um, yeah, I, I plan on clearing that at a later date and I'll probably make a video about that, but obviously, I use the native mail client. Podcasts, this helps stimulate my mind. When I go on a run, I listen to uh, podcasts. You know, I've been listening to the Joe Rogan and I've been listening to his Edward Norton podcast and his are pretty long. So I usually listen to them over multiple days unless I am going on a run or working out then I can get it all done in one go. I might be the only person that uses Apple Maps, but I really like how it's integrated with iOS and it just works very well on an iPhone, so that's why it's there. Notion. Notion is a new app that I recently discovered and um, I'm still learning a lot about it, but it's a huge conglomerate of a lot of different ideas and you can create a calendar in there, a database, you could create a residence calendar, you could take notes, and of course it syncs across all your devices. So once I learn more about it, I definitely wanna share it with you guys, but it seems to be a very powerful app from all the people I've seen use it and how they've used it in different applications. So I definitely wanna you know, utilize Notion more. Next is going to be Notes. Apple Notes works super great. 
syncs across my iPhone, my Mac, and it allows me to just get my ideas down on paper. Well, not really paper, but you know what I mean. It, it helps me just dump my brain. Reminders is a, another great app. Um, I just started using it, but it's super powerful. I plan on creating routines daily, weekly, monthly, and I see that um, Reminders is going to be a great tool for me to be very, very productive going forward. Google, of course you have to have Google, and that is my homepage. Next we're going to get into the folder with all of my apps, which are also organized by page. And when we go in, this is all of my photo and video apps, and it also helps me prom promote creativity. When I easily could click on it, I can easily access my camera. I can easily check in Helios. It allows me to see when golden hour is, when sunrise, sunset. Um, it's a, just a beautiful app, and you could set locations. You can see an augmented reality on where the sun is and you can travel through time and you can see when and where the sun, the moon's trajectory is going to be. It has a light meter that you can uh, get the correct exposure if you're shooting on a film camera. Also, um, there's a map that can show you when blue, that shows you like on the map where blue golden hour is so you can be in those spots so you can take your dope photos or videos and have that perfect lighting. So uh, it's a super great app. You guys should definitely check it out. Hyperlapse is to shoot hyperlapses. Filmic Pro is the most powerful video editing tool, um, video editing tool, video shooting tool on you know the iPhone. You can change white balance, aperture, you know, you can do pool focusing, rack focusing, and like all that stuff. So it's super cool. Focus. Focus is another cool app that I discovered and it uses computational photography and it allows you to basically simulate what it would be like if you did have a DSLR using, you know, your phone camera. So let me find this photo um, of myself, my girlfriend and her brother. We were on a ferry and you can see this is the normal photo. It looks like this, but I could click on my girlfriend and we can, you know, open up the aperture and create a blurry background and you can do it very tastefully that it looks very realistic if you do it like super you know scale it kind of looks kind of fake but it's um, a pretty cool app you just have to make sure your subject is in the foreground you have a, enough separation from the background to be able to really get the depth of field effect that you would want to simulate from a DSLR but it's a, it's a cool app focus you guys should check it out GoPro, if you have a GoPro, you definitely gotta use that. But Spark Camera, this is also another cool app because it has a unique application that you can use for Instagram stories, TikTok, whatever. So obviously, you can film like normal, but what sets it apart is you can click here and then it allows you to film with the front-facing camera and the rear-facing camera at the same exact time, which is pretty cool. So you could be cooking something and you could get your reaction or you could go hiking somewhere and you could see yourself react to the scenery and everybody could see what you're seeing. So I think this is gonna be a fun tool um, and a lot of people could take advantage of it and it's completely free. Um, Spark Camera, you guys should check it out. Fuji, I shoot with the Fuji, so the Fuji app allows me to get you know stuff from this camera onto here super great camera i still love the default camera app it's just so simple night mode is pretty great with the iphone 11 photos photos app obviously that's where all the photos are pretty standard this is to promote creativity we swipe to the next page and this is to help stimulate my mind help me learn something help me actually educate myself and not waste time when i am on my phone or if i have downtime somewhere i can use this page to really stimulate my mind so of course i have skillshare if you don't know what that is just google it feedly feedly is a great app because it allows you to pull a bunch of different articles from a bunch of different websites and store it all in one place so on the left i have business cinema design fashion photography tech so if i go into my tech i um am like subscribed to a bunch of different websites and it pulls their latest articles here so then you have it all in one place. So I could see from Wired, Digital Trends, Gizmodo, 
Mashable in Gadget. So it's just a one-stop shop and it's across a broad range of categories. So any website from food, photography, fashion, you can have it all here, all in one place. Safari to browse the web, you already know that. Audible and Audible, we all know what that is, is for audiobooks. But I may end up getting rid of Audible because I've been using Libby. And what Libby is, is if you have a library, which you should in your neighborhood, your local town, city, whatever, there's a lot of free resources that we receive by having a library card. And when you think about it, we are paying taxes and all this other stuff, but there's a lot of, you know, free resources that you can get and take advantage of. So Libby, um, with the library card, you can check out audiobooks. So you can do like Crazy Rich Asians, Hunger Games, Ready Player One, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson's book, audiobooks. So it's super cool and you can check out ebooks as well. And um, it's a super fun app, but uh, yeah, and it's completely free. Some books that are that just came out or some audiobooks that are super popular, you may have to wait a little bit because other people have them checked out, just like a normal library system. But you can always find something else to read in the meantime or listen to. So I think that's super great. And then RB Digital, I use this a lot. This is also something that you can get um, through your library system, but it allows me to check out a bunch of different magazines which I like to read because magazines, I just think, um, provide a lot of good information, just more articles supporting different, you know, artists, seeing different artistry, seeing different ideas, mechanics, and just learning. So like, I'll go into GQ and hit read. And then, yeah, so it has the articles. You just swipe the pages, read through, um, which is super cool that you can get access to all these magazines and it's all completely free because I have a library card. And this is gonna be the common theme, Mango, that allows you to learn a new language, also through my library system. And Linda is just like Skillshare, but it's free. It doesn't have as wide of a range of topics as Skillshare, but there's a lot of free information, free classes and stuff that you can take and learn from Linda which is also through your library system. So that's super cool. Swipe next, I have my banking page with all my banking apps. Then we go to the next one. There's more kind of banking stuff and then also uh, YouTube and Patreon. But Affirm, I think Affirm is pretty great. You can like finance a lot of different products. The interest rate is kind of ridiculous. But if you can't afford something right now, you can get yourself a small little loan for the item, but just make sure you pay it off before, you know, whenever it's supposed to be due. Otherwise, you're going to be paying a ton in interest. But if you need a little new lens, you can go on there, you can buy straight from Canon and get it without putting down any money. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, numbers, I use numbers to, you know, I have an Excel sheet to track my expenses and it syncs seamlessly with my Mac Hue. So I have Bluetooth Hue bulbs. I don't have the normal Philips Hue because I don't have a hub, but with these Bluetooth bulbs, I could take them wherever I want to go. And because they're Bluetooth, I can just change them um, all the time. So if I put Energize on, whew, that's super bright. Let's see, let's do uh, Blue Lagoon. Nah, I'm not messing with that. Uh, what's Fairfax? Okay, I, I, I dig Fairfax. But yeah, so you can just change different lighting and stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Patreon, we know what Patreon is. YouTube Studio, Video Analytics, YouTube. You definitely know what YouTube is. Travel, this is the travel page. So we got Hopper to find flights, Kayak and Cheapo Air. Those are all great. I go through all those to find my flights. We got Lyft and Uber, whichever cheaper. Whichever is cheaper is the one I use. Pay by phone is so I can park in Seattle and just pay for it. We got Yelp, Airbnb, Delta, typical stuff. Next, we have the typical um, Apple apps that are on the iPhone. So we, you know, health, activity, uh, FaceTime, calculator, Amazon. Uh, you definitely know what Amazon is. And then we go to the next page. 
um, LinkedIn settings, weather, pages. Uh, if I ever have to edit a document, I use pages. I just like the way it works. And of course, it syncs with my Mac. Same with Keynote. And also, one thing I really like about Keynote is when I have to give a presentation, using it on my Mac, it syncs with my phone, which syncs with my Apple Watch. And I can use my watch as a clicker. So that's just, that's just super cool. Um, and I don't have to carry something around, you know. Uh, SeatGeek to find, you know, tickets for a game. Wanderminder. Uh, this is a fun app. It's $2, maybe $3. But Wanderminder reminds you to drink water. <laughs> and you might think, why would I pay for an app? Because there's a lot of free apps. I just like the way it looks and the way it's integrated with um, Apple Health. So say... You know, I actually drank 40 ounces of water so far today. So then you put 40 ounces. I still have a remaining 80 ounces that I need to drink for the day. It helps you keep track. And then it has this like cool little animation. You can see like the water's like splashing around. It's little details like that that make it feel like, oh yeah, I spent two dollars on this app. All right, I, I I can stomach it. So uh, yeah, water minder. Remind yourself to drink some water, and it automatically calculates how much water you should drink uh, based off of your weight and height. But it's just like a general like number. Obviously, if you're more active, you should drink more water. But uh, I'm no doctor. Don't listen to me. Uh, shortcuts. I want to spend a whole video on shortcuts because shortcuts is super powerful. And I think it is slept on too much. It makes the iPhone just super amazing. And it's already an amazing product but shortcuts just takes it to a whole nother level. So stay tuned for that. Find My is, obviously it's an app that allows you to find your stuff. Um, I never really use it because I don't lose my stuff. Swipe next. Um, Nike, check out for some shoes. Kronos, that's a work thing. Concur, that's also a work thing for receipts. We got Apple TV, I sub uh, free year subscription. I've been watching C. Well, I only watched the first episode of C and I thought it was pretty good. Roki, that's for Roku TV. Controller is broken, but this is a phone remote, so that works super well. Google Drive, because I still use that sometimes. Google Photos, and helps me back up photos that are on my phone because it's free unlimited storage. And I still use Google Maps, despite me using Apple Maps. Google Maps, I still Google establishments and um, different places uh, just to like look things up because I just like the way it, it pulls the information or like Yelp and stuff. But I still use Apple Maps for navigation. And then the last page is my like entertainment page. I have Fandango to buy movie tickets, Flickster to check out Rotten Tomatoes, Eventbrite if there's any events going on, get a ticket. Uh, fantasy football because I've been playing fantasy football with my friends and I am second to last place but um yeah Instagram obviously that's Instagram Twitter Facebook Messenger and then next door is to know what's going on in my neighborhood and then Apple Music because I use that to you know listen to uh, the latest albums when they come out just so I could still stay up to date on some of the music but uh yeah I have that at the far end of the pages. So if I wanted to really swipe to get to Instagram, it's gonna take me a long time to get there. And it kind of creates a barrier for me to, you know, mindlessly go on Instagram and end up scrolling. And next thing I know, two hours pass. If I do wanna get to any of those apps though, say I do wanna get on Instagram, I could just swipe down and I could just type I and then go into Instagram. So it's, I could still easily get there, I could still easily find any of the apps, but, that extra little barrier helps me be a bit more conscious or aware of what I'm doing when I go on my phone. And then I can have that second to guess and think and be like, why am I about to go on Instagram when I don't really have a reason to be on Instagram? Um, also, I don't know if you noticed, but when I swipe down, I don't have any app suggestions because also this is another uh, barrier to make sure that when I swipe down, Instagram or YouTube or whatever doesn't just automatically pop up and I click on it. I really have to type in what it is that I wanna go to 
So then it gives me that second to think and be like, is this really something that I want to do? But yeah, that is my minimalistic phone. That's probably a super long video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that and um, discovered some new apps that you might want to try out. Comment down below and let me know what you think of how my phone is set up. I also want to know how your phone is set up and if you use any of the apps that I use. Uh, like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Every Tuesday I plan on having a tech video and then of course every Thursday I plan on having kind of like a thought provoking, stimulating, thinking piece to go along with my channel. So uh, subscribe if you want to come along on this journey. And um, as always, thank you guys for watching. You found me. And until next time, peace.